Hello dear audience, Grandmaster Sega Shipoff is with you again today. I'm commenting the 8th round game from the Vacancy 2009 tournament. Today we're looking at the game Carlson against Komsky. A new military trick. I've already written about the unpredictability of Carlson's first move. The Slavic defense. German income variation. Honestly speaking, I still can't understand why the classics of the beginning of the 20th century couldn't find this m beneficial move for black. Given the queen's gambit forever past ambition c8, an opportunity to free itself. Now, in our time, it looks simple and logical. The minion step into the light here instead of a6, bishop f5 isn't good due to this variation right here. And white is left without an extra pawn. So a6 and a4. One of the many smart answers for white. How many people didn't try to argue the Chebaninko variation, and white still hasn't had any success? Now, even the biggest skeptics admit that black has a healthy positional base in this game. The move in the game doesn't let black take over the space with b5, which would have been possible if e3 was played instead. b5, c5, knight bd7, and then black pushes e5. So a4, e6. A solid development. Yes, the black bishop c8 is left at home, but white paid for that achievement with the price of weakening the square b4. The imperfections of the line bishop f5, queen b3, rook a7 were found in the interesting game Gelfand Morozevich, which happened in Astana in 2001. e6, g3. Magnus is trying to achieve the structure in the style of the Catalan. Gara is fixating the beneficial structure of the queen's side. Black pieces will feel very comfortable in the square b4. A rare plan. Usually black transfers the knight through a6 to b4. A novelty. In most cases, after the move knight d7, white has to do something about the defense of the pawn c4, but Magnus isn't afraid of that loss. Mission b4. That's who is going to take over the square b4. Acceptance of the sacrifice here, d takes c4, forces black to suffer for a long time in a passive position. So, bishop b4. A beautiful blow. Carlson is blowing up the center using black's small lag in development. A principal argument. Komsky accepts the gift. Much worse here is d takes e4. Knight g5, and white immediately wins back the pawn. When getting into a fight, one needs to come up with new blows, not paying attention to losses. White is cutting off the path of evacuation for the black king. The pawn e3 is a bonus pay for the initiative. I think that any skilled chess player will remember the analogous variations from the other openings with a similar idea. For example, there's the classic of the style. Kotner, Smyslov, that which happened in Moscow and Prague, 1946. That's the predecessor of Carlson's game. An American grandmaster didn't have enough courage to take the second pawn. An understandable decision. One who is under unexpected attack with sacrifices instinctively wants to step away and minimize the sharpness and danger of the variations. White must act sweepingly and sharply. Komsky's idea is easy. He cut off the deathly diagonal, prepared to castle. Looks like the black king will be able to avoid direct attack. Here we found out that the beautiful knight on e5 is hampering his own. It's not possible to move rook e1 check. Magnus is going crazy. Open up the center at any price, catch the runner, and open up the lines for attack. God and didn't even consider taking the pawn, and did the right thing. King's safety is more important than all the pawns in the world. Hmm. Should he have hurried with the trade? The move rook e1 here looked good with the idea that he takes c4, d5. Though Carlson could probably calculate the variation deeper than I could in a couple of minutes. So c takes d5. The white bishops are shooting at the black center from different sides. White has compensation for the pawn, but more likely than not, it will only be enough for simplification and equality. My predictions became a reality really quickly. Draw. Later what could have followed was he takes d5.
and white one back the pawn and the equality was becoming clear. Well, this short drawer isn't the same as yesterday's. Carlson and Komsky showed some very interesting ideas. The simplifications were a logical ending of incredible play. So, the eighth round is finished. I, Grandmaster Siggy Shipup, am saying goodbye for now. Tomorrow, the tournament, and we have a day off. I'll see you to your audience the day after tomorrow. Best of everything to you, and have a good day.